Welcome to the Exploring Unschooling podcast. I'm Pam Larickia, longtime unschooling mom and author. Join me and my wonderful guests for interviews, information, and inspiration about unschooling and living joyfully with your family. You can find the episode show notes, your free introductory ebook, What is Unschooling?, and lots more information at livingjoyfully.ca. And here's the show. Hi, everyone. I'm Pam Larickia, and this is episode number 58 of the podcast. It's the 8th of February, 2017, as I record this intro. In this episode, I chat with Melissa about her experience unschooling as a single parent to a lively eight-year-old child. She blogs as Single Mom Unschooling and graciously shares glimpses into her and her son's unschooling lives there and on her Facebook page. You'll find links to both in the show notes. In our conversation, she shares how they weave unschooling and her work as a nanny together, why she began an online community for single unschooling parents, why her son chooses unschooling, and lots more. And just a heads up, I'm sorry about the not-so-great connection. Melissa and I tried a few things, and this is as good as we could get it. If you do find it too distracting, you can read the transcript. And I'm looking into other, more reliable ways to record interviews besides Skype moving forward. As an update this week, we went to see Michael in the show at Medieval Times. It's our first time since he became a knight. When we went, he was playing the Blue Knight, and it was a lot of fun to watch him play the tournament games on horseback, like throwing a javelin onto a target, using a lance to collect rings as you ride by them, and jousting, of course. As part of the show, he actually threw me a flower, and I caught it. (laughs) He also had a long fight scene, which ended with him being speared in the abdomen. And it was my birthday, which meant that my... 365 year of being 50 project came to an end as well. The project was interesting and fun and lighthearted and sometimes challenging too. I will definitely continue to post uh, pictures on Instagram. I actually just posted a few from the show if you want to see what Micah looks like as a knight. I have lots of personal goals this year, so I'm excited to keep stepping forward. And I want to send a huge thank you to everyone who has chosen to support the show on Patreon. And welcome to new patrons, Amy Wyant and Rosie McNeely. I deeply appreciate all my patrons. You guys inspire me, and I love that you're helping me share unschooling information with anyone who wants to explore ways to live this wonderful lifestyle with their family. And if you'd like to support the show, even for as little as a dollar a month, check out the Exploring Unschooling page at patreon.com. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash exploring and schooling. Now this week, I want to share a quote from the interview. Melissa and I were talking about giving our children space to explore and letting things unfold in their own way. And Melissa shared this juicy insight. If you give them that freedom to look at a situation from their own perspective, sometimes they're going to learn something completely different than what you would have taught them it becomes so much more meaningful for them. It's so key because we cannot know for sure where their thoughts are in that moment or where they might go next. When we jump in unasked, ostensibly to preemptively offer help that we think they need, we are pointing them in the direction that our minds are going, not theirs. And notice that I said unasked. If they are asking for our help, then we help. That is what they are wanting to move forward with their own next connection. If we can hold back and give them the freedom to follow their thoughts and perspective, they will learn what is most meaningful to them in that moment. That's the best learning. Sure, sometimes that will align with what we might have jumped in to point out, but sometimes it will be completely different. And if they're going to end up in the same place anyway, what real value do we add by getting them there a little bit faster? We risk taking them off course completely. That's the value of seeing things through their eyes and not just what they physically see, but from their perspective, the questions that are rolling around in their head, the experiences that they personally have had, the dreams that they are dreaming and how those will all weave together and influence where their thoughts are and where they may go next. We aren't them, so we cannot know for sure. 
When we don't jump in, we give them the space and time for creativity and insight to spark, for a new connection to deepen their understanding of the world and how it works. Because they are not trying to recreate our understanding. Rather, they are building their own personal view of the world. Giving my kids the space was never about distancing myself from them, though. I wanted to be around when they had a question in the moment or wanted to bat around their thoughts and ideas. It was more about being patient and understanding even more deeply that they owned their learning, their life. It's so cool, right? And now, on to the interview with Melissa. Hi, everyone. I'm Pam Lariccia from livingjoyfully.ca, and today I'm here with Melissa. Hi, Melissa. Hi. Hi. It is so wonderful to have you on the show. As a little introduction, Melissa is an unschooling mom to her eight-year-old son. She blogs at Single Mom Unschooling, as well as maintaining the Single Mom Unschooling Facebook page, and I really enjoyed the glimpses into their lives that she shares. I am looking forward to chatting with you, Melissa, about your experience unschooling as a single parent. And to start us off, can you share with us a bit about you and your family and how you discovered unschooling? Sure. I, uh born and I've lived in the Midwestern United States my entire life. I went away to college to be a teacher because I got the opportunity in high school to work with some first grade students and I enjoyed it so much watching those little those little minds just soak up everything they could. Um, I wanted to do that. Uh, so I got my teacher's certificate, and I worked in schools. I've worked as a camp counselor. Um, a lot of different uh, experiences working with children, and I've enjoyed it a lot. So I was a little later to the game becoming a mom. Um, I do have a, a son who's um, definitely given me a lot of uh, reasons to do some research. He's super active and challenging and intelligent. A um, little strong-willed at times. And um, so I started to see things, um, even when I, was, when I was pregnant and doing research, uh, I, I hit on attachment parenting, which seemed to really resonate with me. Um, and I looked into homeschooling because... Well, I was a teacher, so it seems logical that I would, you know, <laughs> teach my own child. But then I discovered unschooling through all this attachment parenting reading that I was doing. And it made so much sense. It was um, all about trusting this little person that you were caring for and, and following their lead and fulfilling their individual needs. And that that made so much sense to me. I, I uh I pretty much decided probably before he was born, that's what we were going to do. Awesome. <laughs> I had, yeah, as people know, it took, it was a long time before I discovered uh, homeschooling and unschooling. And uh, even the phrase attachment parenting, although it seemed to kind of describe what I was drawn to, but it, it really, I was talking about this earlier today with Joseph. It, it, there is, um, it's a whole shift. Uh, some, like when you first discover you're pregnant and, and, and um, when your child arrives, the whole mothering aspect and that attachment connection and bond was something that uh, really surprised me uh, in how powerful it was, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that was amazing. Um, so I was wondering, what was it about unschooling specifically that inspired you to choose it as a lifestyle? Was it pretty, was it mostly that bond and that trust, that relationship piece? I think so. A lot of it was, um, my, my son was born a mover and a shaker and I got to witness from the very beginning how he would push the envelope as far as exploring his environment, the ways he would use his body and the curiosity of, just everything. He wanted to know everything. And <laughs> I, I enjoyed fostering that so much and learning to kind of step back and just watch 
his reaction. And unschooling made so much sense in that regard because that's essentially what you're doing those first few years anyways of unschooling if you break it down. So Yeah, it really if you decide to unschool just from, you know, attachment parenting, living together, um, you know, being with them, following um, their cues and and their curiosity and the things they want to do. It, it really doesn't your days really don't change much, do they? they no. You just don't send them to school. Exactly. Uh, that ties in nicely uh, with a picture that you recently posted on your Facebook page, which I love because it was a picture of a cake that your son had made. And with it, you wrote, it was tasty, especially for winging it. He loves to cook this way. And it's been a great lesson for me in stepping back and allowing the learning to happen. Baking is my thing. And I like to follow recipes until I get the hang of things. For him, I believe it's more of a science experiment mentality. And that choice to step back and give our child the space to explore um, and to let things unfold in their own way is pretty key to unschooling, isn't it? It's huge. It is. And I think that's why a lot of people have such a hard time with it. Um, we as adults kind of struggle with letting go of our ego and our attitude of knowing better and um, we, we want to teach and impart what we believe is this knowledge that we have. Um, but if, if um, you give them that freedom to look at a situation from their own perspective, sometimes they're going to learn something completely different than what you would have taught them. And it becomes so much more meaningful for them. Um, they're in the driver's seat. They take ownership of it. And... It sticks with you. It really does. M most of the things I remember well from my childhood are the things that I looked into or that were interesting to me. And I, it's funny, I just had that conversation with my son a couple of days ago about the things that I, I learned as a child that I'm still interested in, that it was because I took That makes such a big difference, isn't it? And you're right that I found that to be it, it was one of the um, biggest aha moments for me. But it's also one of the challenges, too, right? Because it's so easy to want to jump in and help because, you know, we, we want to support them. We want to help them. Right. And and you want to jump in and say, oh, and what about this? And, and you don't want them to miss this connection or that connection. But when we jump in and do it and start to kind of, we kind of take it over and we really don't know what direction their mind was going, right? What kind of connections they were going to make. Yeah, and baking is a hard one because it's always been something I really enjoy. And he loves it too, but in a completely different way. It's all about, oh, I'll throw this ingredient in and this ingredient in and we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I love that. It's been interesting, too, because uh, Joseph has been um, interested for a while at, in in cooking and doing more cooking in general and uh, some other experiments. He's got an experiment with a couple of uh, different meads brewing Ooh. and... Yeah. And he's been making some soups and everything. So it's been really interesting to watch him because his he's um, always been, um, I guess, maybe more of a perfectionist tendency. Mm -hmm. So he kind of wants to know that things are going to work out. Right. So he is definitely a recipe follower. Right. So it's just so interesting to see how the different learning personalities pursue their interests. So he was looking for particular recipes and um, and then we went through them and figured out, you know, uh, for the groceries, the supplies that he needed. And, you know, he's measuring things exactly. And we're talking about some sub substitutions and trying wow. to get those measurements, you know, and and yet, um you know, his brother is more, we'll throw this together, we'll throw this together. And it's something, it's a progression in my cooking and baking that's happened over the years. I was always follow the recipe, follow the recipe. Mm -hmm. And now with more experience, now I'm more comfortable throwing in substitutions and changing up 
you know, even just flavors for things that I know we like. But it's just so fascinating when you let them take it over, you can see the way they like to approach their learning, can't you? Yes. And I've learned a lot from him in that regard. That's it. It is so interesting, isn't it? Because I have learned so much more freedom, too, in the way that I approach things and even approach my days just from watching them because they are just so more so much more willing to just try things out. Right. And they're OK with them going wrong, whereas I'm still feeling, <laughs> oh, crap, I did something wrong. It's a mistake. That's horrible. Right. <laughs> and they they even even when they have different methods, you know, if they like to follow recipes or directions or they like to play around and experiment, either way, they're still willing to play around and, and do it and not worry so much about what happens in the end, aren't they? Because they know they're learning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's so much fun. Um, now, you've shared online that you work as a nanny. So I was wondering if you could share some of the reasons behind that choice. I do. I was working as a nanny when I got pregnant, and uh, the family was very supportive of me coming back to work and bringing him with me, and that that seemed to solve all sorts of problems, and I was really excited about that. <clears throat> so he came back to work with me when he was three weeks old in a wrap, um, and he's come to work with me ever since. It's uh, I enjoy working with kids, so nannying is an optimal job in that regard. Um, it's also very supportive of this unschooling journey that we've been on, that he's been able to come to work with me. Uh, we haven't had to worry about child care, and in, in true unschooling fashion, it's basically living as if school doesn't exist, and him coming to work with me is just basically the same thing as staying at home all day. He's in someone's home, playing with his toys or whatever's age appropriate at that time. And each family has pretty much accepted him as part of their family. Um, and he's, he's got some experience, a lot of different families, you know, different cultures, and uh, see so it's been really awesome that I've had a way to make a living and still spend that time with him and support him and what he wants to learn or what he wants to do that day. So you were originally nannying bef before you got pregnant with him. So were you finding nannying to be uh, an an a nice, because you had your teaching certificate, right? So um, what took you from your teaching certificate into nannying? Um, uh, it was kind of funny little. I, I had moved and taken a teaching job in a daycare. And I was, uh, I was helping this family that I started nannying for by filling in some gaps for them in care that they needed. When the daycare would close, uh, I would take their children home. And they thought about it and realized that it might just be easier to have me as their nanny in their home because the children, because they had transportation and they didn't have to worry about getting to the daycare at a certain time. So that's, that's, how, I, that's how I made the switch. That's really cool. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. What a cool like a transition just a way that uh that that worked out even better for for both you and them and you just kind of fell into it <laughs> yeah there was some definite perks to it because you know when you're in a school or in a daycare setting you can't go anywhere unless it's a scheduled thing or when you're nannying if you want to go to the park that day and it's nice you can go to the park i i loved that kind of freedom there were some other things since I was, um, I, I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't a mom yet. And, um, the nanny job afforded me some other freedoms. I did some online classes while their son was napping and things like that. So. 
Yeah, no, you can be so much more responsive to the kids' individual needs, right? Rather than than being in a more institutional environment where you've got a larger group and things need to be more organized. Right. Yeah. Um, so you've talked a little bit about um, bringing your son with you. So I was wondering if you could dive a little bit more into how you weave unschooling and your work together. Like, does your son bring um, stuff that he's interested in with him when you go to your family? Yes, we, we pack bags. Um, pretty much every family we've worked with, we've packed at least a bag of whatever he's interested in. And that's probably our biggest difference from other unschooling families who spend most of their days at home, or at least have access to their home during the day. Uh, there's more planning involved. If, if there's something he's interested in that's a project we want to work on, we have to decide ahead of time whether we're going to do it at our house or we're going to do it, you know, at work. Um, some projects are big and messy or take a longer time and they're more conducive to doing at our home. So we have to choose when we do those. Um, he also has to think a little bit ahead what he's going to want to do the next day. And he's gotten older, so that's more of his responsibility at this point to pack things that are interesting. Uh, I packed bags of things I hoped or thought he might be <laughs> Sometimes that was successful, sometimes not. Depending on the household that we're in, they may have more or less toys or activities or things that he's interested in also. The last family we worked with had an infant, so they only had rattles and little <laughs> toys. So there was nothing there that he was really interested required a lot more packing. Um, and then as far as our day at work, he, he calls it his work too. He's done this his whole life and he understands this is the alternative. He chooses this instead of going to school. And um, so he helps out as he wants. Um, he helped out a lot with that infant and that it was good for him. He learned about changing diapers and about bottles and things that he hadn't experienced yet. And so this, we have to work around other people's schedules. So it helps with him, you know, being very flexible. Uh, his needs don't always come first and that's okay because as a, as an only child, I kind of like that he has that for those 40 hours a week where he's not the only child. And he's had to wait. You know, you prioritize that the baby needs a bottle right now. Well, you going to have to wait a minute to read that book or whatever. So that's, that's kind of how we work around the family schedule. Well, yeah, and it's nice that he he knows that that this is his choice, right? That um, he's choosing to uh, accommodate or, or be involved in that work. I, that's so cool that he calls it his work too, right? That he's participating in the income that you guys are making for for you guys to to live with, um, and he knows that he has has the option of school. But this is his choice. And, and he, yeah, he just it sounds like it um, would help him, um, I guess, see better that it's his choice and that um, figuring out ways to work with um, that environment and figuring out ways, as you said, to do his projects and fit them around the, the people and the schedule and that kind of stuff. That that sounds like it's really cool for him. Yeah. It, it was nice with that family in particular, um, how during that time we, we scheduled in some one-on-one -on -one time because babies are so much more labor intensive and they need you to focus on them. Um, mm -hmm. So we would take that opportunity allowed. We have to balance that whole connection. Um, when I'm 
taking care of someone else's children for so many hours of the day. Finding those those times where it's just us or where we can balance, um, you know, some alone time. We, we did uh, a little hot chocolate and read aloud or some mad lips so it was something fun to connect before I would need to pay more attention to their child again. So that that is helpful and has really been more my learning experience than his. Yeah. That's true. Actually, we talked about that recently, like on the last Q&A call, how um, not looking for or not feeling like we need to have big swaths of time for these connections, that these these moments, these connecting moments um, can can just be smaller snippets of the day. And, and it depends on, you know, if there's I, I think the. The comment was because there were younger children or maybe a baby that, you know, they had to take care of and that you didn't have to try and arrange things for big moments, either with with a spouse, with other children, with whomever, that you can really connect and enjoy moments that that are shorter and just maybe more often throughout the day. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I was wondering if you could share with us one of your biggest challenges around unschooling as a single mom and how you worked or continue to work through it. It, it sounds funny, but I think my biggest challenge is uh, not looking at everybody else who's doing it. And, and especially since I'm online so much now with uh, Instagram and Facebook, and it, it's so immediate with seeing what mm-hmm. other people are doing throughout the day to not compare our situation. Um, ours is different and it, it's easy to look at other people and be excited about, oh, well, that, the grass is always good mentality. Oh, I wish I could be at home with my son and we could be doing that. Uh, it, it's not necessarily that the grass is greener. It's just different. And mm-hmm. that's, that's been a huge realization for me, working and unschooling, uh, I guess, not comparing. Um, but I think the biggest reason that I started looking for more of an online community, and I started my blog and started reaching out to people, was because I saw that there were other people that were having similar challenges to mine. Uh, mostly moms that I've, I've talked to that have been in situations where they, they didn't know how they could possibly do unschooling or homeschooling as a single parent and trying to work and balance it all. So my way of, of I guess, bringing it back around so that I'm not feeling envious is is doing this so that I'm giving hope to other people that may be in these kind of situations and showing them it, it can be done. And it's not bad. It, it really isn't. It's actually a lot of fun to be able to work and to be with my son all day and to help him with his learning. So that's how I balanced it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you make a great point about um, not comparing ourselves because it can be so easy to get overwhelmed when you go online and see, you know, what other homeschooling or unschooling families are doing and what they're up to and, you know, maybe what their their kids are up to and stuff. And it can be so easy to get caught up in that and start judging our own um, situations and our own children and stuff. And that really it gets, it really does get in the way of us clearly seeing and supporting our own kids where they are. That's why I talk so much about understanding, um, the principles, um, and ideas behind unschooling, but that it's going to look very different for each family, isn't it? Yeah. And, and I love that you're sharing, um, uh, just little bits of, of your life um, online because that that is one of the huge questions. And I've had people ask me, you know, can you have a, a single unschooling parent um, come and talk? Because when you first hear about it, it can be hard to imagine that one could figure out a way to unschool 
while being a single parent. And I think you are a great example for a way, you know, it doesn't make it look easy or anything, but unschooling isn't, (laughs) you know, but when you're enjoying it and you're, um, it, it's an effort. It's it's a choice to do something besides school. And when you're choosing to do that, um, I mean, you've done a doing a great job of bringing that together. It's definitely been a challenge this past year, but we've, we've gotten stronger because of it. So that's the silver lining. Yeah, I know. I think that that's another piece that comes up too, is that people, when they're choosing unschooling, when they first read about it, they think, oh, it sounds, you know, just beautiful. And so like what a perfect kind of lifestyle, but life really, it's, it's really life and stuff happens in life all the time. And it's about, um, being available to live that with our children right? And, and figure it out together rather than um, this pretty picture that people can imagine. <laughs> yeah, and that, that is the aspect of the impact that they might be as a better away at school all day. Um, my son's very aware of some of the challenges that we've had, but he's also got to see how I overcome those. And that, mm-hmm. that to me is huge. That's, that's a bigger learning experience, I think, sometimes than, you know, sitting down learning a math problem. So that's something that will serve him really well in his life, is learning how to overcome challenges. So. Yeah. Because, I mean, challenges are always going to be part parts of our lives, aren't they? So, last question. Mm-hmm. I was hoping you could share what one of your favorite parts is about unschooling with your son. Well, I shared this question with him, too. So that Very he, cool. He can give me a little bit of perspective. And he's, he's, he's given me this answer, similar answer, other times. But um, what I love most about unschooling is the the time that we get to spend together and it's really made for a kind of intimacy that I wouldn't have had otherwise our jokes and his learning and just our lives together um they're so much more intimate because I know where the jokes come from or the video that he watched or where that funny little story came from that he's telling and um I love that I get to see all of the pieces. Um, I'm not missing out on several hours of them during the day. And um, and he said that because he chooses unschooling, he doesn't just get to see me at breakfast and for a couple hours at the end of the day. Um, that, that's our favorite part is really that quality time that we get to spend together every day. He understands because he's seen other households where the kids get up, they eat their breakfast, and they zoom out the door. And then they get to see mom or dad uh, for a couple hours or before they go to sleep at the end of the day. And to him, he, he can't imagine that being the case. He, I sound like I'm tooting my own horn, but he really enjoys the time that he gets to spend with me. Not so their wife can choose to go to school. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that I I never thought of it that way, but it's true. He does get to see you know kind of both ends of the spectrum as well, doesn't he? With the the families that you guys are are in with and caring for their children during the day, right? Yeah. And I I love the word that you used intimacy because it is such a more intimate relationship that we get to have with our children, isn't it? I, yeah. The, I love the bit about understanding where the jokes come from and the comments, right? Because (laughs) you've seen all the little things that they've come in contact with uh, during the day. So that's one of my favorite things, right? Because you can see like all the different connections that have come yeah. together to this moment. 
Connect exactly it, how all the pieces fit together. Then, yeah, that's really fun. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> well, thanks so much for taking the time to speak with me today, Melissa. And before we go, uh, where is the best place for people to connect with you online? I'll be sure to have links in the show notes for all those different places. That's awesome. And thank you so much for your time today. And thanks very much for sharing your experiences with unschooling as a single parent online. Great. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. And have a great day. You too. Thanks for listening. I hope you found it helpful. You might also like the backlist episodes at livingjoyfully.ca forward slash podcast. While you're there, be sure to pick up your free copy of my book, What is Unschooling? In it, we'll explore some of the common questions people have when they first hear about unschooling, like how will my child learn? How do I know they're learning? What is de-schooling? And how do I get started? It's also available at many online ebook retailers. And if you'd like to connect online, you can find me on Facebook at Living Joyfully. Until next time, have fun living and learning with your family.